The Christadelphian Broadcast Ministry presents The Kingdom of God. astonishing that a significant numbers of Christians are totally unaware of God's plan and purpose as revealed in the scriptures. And by the way, it's not about if you are righteous, you go to heaven, or if you are unrighteous, you go to hell. It's, it's not about any of that. It's about the kingdom of God, my dear friends. Join me on the other side of the broadcast, and we will do a sort of a deep dive into this subject. But as of now, we would like to uh, remind our listeners that we're still offering free of cost the manual Bible basics. This manual will reveal the joy and peace of true Christianity. It's a study manual, you see, to be used in conjunction with the Bible. Also, you can send for a free Bible correspondence course comprising of 14 lessons. Please return the question the sheet at the end of each lesson for a sort of a progress report. And a certificate will be issued upon completion of the course. You can reserve your copy by calling the number that is scrolled in the bottom of your screen. For faster service, you can contact us at ChristadelphianHour at gmail.com. That's ChristadelphianHour at gmail.com. For our listeners in Tobago, you can contact us at Tobago Christadelphians. Don't forget the S at gmail.com. That's Tobago Christadelphians at gmail.com. And my dear friends, the sad reality of life in the 21st century is that we live in an instantaneous society. Our coffee is instant, our tea is instant. We do not plant our own food. It is in the supermarket as long as we have the money. Our clothes are sold and sitting in the nearest store. Even our religion is instant and prepared for us. All we have to do is to sing, to listen to the minister, believe what he says, and we are in heaven. If not, we are in hell. Now, we have spent almost three sessions debunking the idea that heaven is the abode of the righteous, and we will not sort of venture down that path again. Yet the presumed unrighteous are said to be in hell. That is a subject we will prepare at a later date. But my dear friends, the most significant subject emanating from the Word of God is the Kingdom of God. The Kingdom of God was in the mind and purpose before Adam and Eve were created. Even before the world's creation, and the Lord Jesus Christ said it much in, in Matthew 25 at verses 34, when he says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from when? From the foundation of the world. And here the Lord Jesus Christ is addressing the saints resurrected from the grave and was being judged as righteous. The kingdom of God, you see, my dear friends, is a divine political system, a state of blessedness to be established where? On this earth. And it will be administered just as in heaven. Well, the kingdom of God as, as a subject was not preached in the Old Testament, you see. But God always alluded to it in his message to his servants. An outstanding illustration of this can be found in Genesis chapter 12 at verses 1 through verses 3. And it is worth noting, my dear friends, that every believer of the Lord Jesus Christ must have a significant grasp of Genesis chapter 12 to comprehend the kingdom of God. Genesis chapter 12, going in at verses 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, 
and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. You know, at this time, Abram was living in Ur of the Chaldees, which is in modern day Iraq. And in verse 2, it says, and I will make of thee a great nation. God made a significant national promise to Abraham. His name wasn't changed to Abraham as yet. Assuring him that his descendants would become a great nation. Although Abraham had m multiple sons, you see, God chose his second son even Isaac as the recipient of this promise overlooking his first son even Ishmael however it is important to note that even though Ishmael was overlooked God still blessed him tremendously and similarly Esau was initially overlooked in favor of Jacob whose name was later changed to Israel. Yet, Esau also received tremendous blessings from God. The nation of promise, though, came to be known as Israel. They were adopted as his sons, as he mentioned to Pharaoh in, in Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, that we, we, we alluded to a couple of a sessions ago, that Israel is my son. Today, my dear friends, they are known more as the regathered nation that does not belong. And their neighbors are intent of driving them into the sea. Yet according to Jeremiah chapter 46, verses 28, it says, Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, said the Lord, for I am with thee. For I will make a full end of all the nations whither I have driven thee, but I will not make a full end of thee, but correct thee in measure. Yet will I not leave thee wholly unpunished. And corrected they were, my dear friends. And as we move further into these promises, the Lord says in Genesis chapter 12 at, at verses two, he says, I will bless you and make your name great. And it's, it's noteworthy that today many people remain unaware of the significance of Abraham. Oh, totally unaware. However, the Lord Jesus Christ affirms in Luke chapter 13 at verses 28 when he says that individuals will see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom and they themselves would be thrust out. It is a statement, my dear friends, of trust encouraging us to place our faith in the promises of God. And God continues in verse 3 with a sort of a family promise. Those who bless Abraham will be blessed and those who curse him will be cursed. And throughout the history we have witnessed a partial sort of fulfillment of, of, of these blessings. The Jewish people have endured all their oppressors and have stood at the gravesite of all those who sought their demise. And lastly, my dear friends, the Lord says in verse 3, Genesis chapter 12, and he says, And in thee, Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And this is an international promise that God is making to Abraham. That all the families of the earth will be blessed through him. And some may ask, what these promises have to do with believers and the kingdom of God? Well, everything you see, my dear friends, because what we have just read in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, 2, 3, is the gospel. And yes, it was being preached in Genesis. The Apostle Paul said as much in Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, and we can sort of do another dive into this particular subject. He says, and the scriptures, or the word of God, foreseeing, or looking across the expanse of time, 
that God would justify or God would declare righteous the heathen or the Gentiles through faith. He preached before the gospel, which is the good news of salvation, unto Abraham, saying, In thee, Abraham, shall all nations be blessed. Wow. God told Abraham of his plan of redemption. The Apostle Paul went on to say in, in verses 26 of Galatians through 29, for ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized in Christ have put on Christ. He says there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And note verse 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to what? To the promise. What promise? The promises he made in, in, in Genesis chapter 12. One has to be baptized in Christ. Not an altar call, my dear friends. Where, where we, we just accept the Lord Jesus Christ and we are saved. No, 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 no. Abraham's seed requires baptism in the Lord Jesus Christ. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. This, my dear friends, is the good news of salvation. The gospel that was told to Abraham. Isn't it wonderful, my dear friends, how the Lord Jesus Christ began his ministry? Note Mark chapter 1, going in at verses 14 and 15. And here's what it says, my dear friends. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching what? The gospel of the kingdom of God, or the good news of the kingdom of God. And note verse 15. Verse 15 he says. And saying. The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe. The gospel. Again my dear friends. The gospel means good news. And, and what is the good news all about? It is the kingdom of God. The single most important subject in the Word of God. In the Gospel of Matthew, we have a sort of another form of this proclamation. Note at, at verses, uh, 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 Matthew chapter 4, at verses 17. He says, it says, from that moment, Jesus began preaching his message. And the echo was, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, as previously discussed, the kingdom of God and, and the kingdom of heaven are, are synonymous terms, you see. They're, they're interchangeable. And it's referring to the kingdom of the God of heaven. The kingdom prepared from the beginning of time was foretold to Abraham by God and became the central theme of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, a sort of a misconception regarding the reading of Luke has led to the popular belief that the kingdom resides within us. In Luke, in Luke chapter 17, going in at verses uh, uh, 20 through 21, and reading from the authorized version, and here's what it says. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, the Lord Jesus Christ answered and said unto them, The kingdom of God come with observation. And in verse 21, he says, Neither shall, shall they say, Lo here or, or lo there, for he says, The kingdom of God is within you. Not inside of those he was addressing. But as the margin in the authorized version says, The kingdom is among those he was addressing. The misinterpretation lies not in the notion that the kingdom resides within the individual Jesus addresses, as stated in the margin, but rather among them, you see. The prevalence of this, this, this erroneous belief within popular theology has led to its acceptance among the congregants. 
often without careful consideration of the scriptures. And consequently, a distorted understanding of the scriptures has been perpetuated, even though that should not be the case. The Lord Jesus Christ taught his disciples in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. He says, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. And what it says, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And notice verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? In earth, as it is in heaven. And we are instructed to pray for the arrival of God's kingdom, where his will shall be carried out on earth as it is in heaven. And you know what this implies, my dear friends? This implies that a future era awaits us on this planet. When the Lord Jesus Christ will establish what? His Father's kingdom. Initiating a reign of righteousness where earthly matters shall be governed in alignment with the heavenly order. This, my dear friends, was the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ preached right through his life on this earth and commanded his disciples before his ascension into heaven. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel. What's the gospel? The good news of the kingdom of God to every creature. He that what? Believe it and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believe it not shall be damned. His disciples reinforce this teaching after his ascension. Take the case in Acts chapter 8 going in at verse 12. And note what Philip. But when they believe Philip preaching what? The things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What? They were baptized, both men and women. The Apostle Paul, my dear friends, in the last chapter of Acts of the Apostles, in chapter 28, at verses 30 and 31, and here's what the Apostle Paul says, or hear what Luke says concerning the Apostle Paul. He dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, Receiving all that came, you see, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. The kingdom of God, my dear friends, is the hope of all of God's saints, where we will live and reign with him. It is the good news for a dying and sinful world. And we yearn, my dear friends, not to go to heaven. We yearn for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And these days, interaction with the Bible rarely extends beyond the verses shared by the messengers on Sunday or during a midweek Bible class. In today's fast-paced world, the busyness of life has created a diminished space for God, leading to a decreased inclination to examine the teachings carefully, critically, consequently. Successive generations are growing up with a limited understanding of the scriptures. Not Matthew chapter 22, or Matthew chapter 24, my dear friends, at verses 45 and 46. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord had made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? And verse 46, he says, Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh, shall find so doing. Having been made ruler over the household of the pleasure of God, what is the meat, my dear friends, that is being offered? As the Apostle Paul later said in Hebrews chapter 5, going in at verses 12 through 14, he says concerning the brethren who should have been growing in the faith. He says, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And not my dear friends, and are becoming such as having need of milk, you see, and not of strong meat. 
We're like babes. We're just drinking milk. You see? For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is what? He says he is just a babe. But strong meat, he says in verse 14, belongeth to them that are of full age, even by those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. See, in the present day, if messengers of the gospel were focused on proclaiming the fundamental principles of God's truth, it would indeed be commendable. However, regrettably, many are not even familiar with these principles. Instead, the, the emphasis revolves around topics such as healing, the love of God, the concepts of heaven and hell, and sometimes even soliciting monetary contributions. While these topics do have their place and significance within the broader scope of Christian teachings, it is essential not to neglect the fundamental principles of God's truth. A balanced approach, my dear friends, to preaching should encompass a comprehensive understanding of the kingdom of God, including the teachings on salvation, repentance, grace, discipleship, and the principles that underpin a righteous and fulfilling life in the Lord Jesus Christ. By grounding their message in the complete counsel of God's word, Messengers can provide their listeners with more holistic and enriching spiritual experience, guiding them toward a deeper understanding of the truth of God's word and fostering a genuine transformative relationship with him. My dear friends, the kingdom of God should be our primary focus. Let us diligently apply our minds to comprehending this, this profound subject. Enabling us to become skilled expositors of one of the oldest themes in the Word of God. In our pursuit of understanding the kingdom, let us prioritize immersing ourselves in the scriptures rather than being directed by the constant prompts for financial contributions that often appear on the television screen. Let us redirect our attention to the word of God without cost. And we do so by delving deep into its teachings so that we can uncover the profound truths surrounding the kingdom of God and equip ourselves to share its significance with others. May our hearts and minds be captivated by the riches of God's word as we earnestly seek to grasp the profound nature of his kingdom. And through this devotion to understanding and sharing the truths of the scriptures, we can sort of experience a deeper connection with God and become uh, what we may term effective ambassadors of his kingdom in the world that we live in today. And therefore, therefore, the Apostle Paul says in, in, in chapter 6 in Hebrews, in verses 1, and we're reading from the common, uh, 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 common English version, and it's very interesting how, how it is framed. He says, we must become mature and start thinking about more than just the basic things we were taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we, sh we, we shouldn't need to be keep talking about why we ought to, to turn from deeds that bring death and why we ought to have faith in God. We shouldn't need to keep teaching about baptism or about, about the, the laying on of hands, you see. Or about people being raised from the dead and future judgment. He says, let's grow up. If 
God is with it. Moving, my dear friends, we must move from drinking milk, talking about, about, you know, initial principles and focusing on the kingdom of God and not about monetary contributions. The kingdom of God is the message for everyone. It's looking forward, my dear friends, to this, this holy theocracy when the Lord Jesus Christ will establish the kingdom of his Father and, and the saints will reign with him. This is the fundamental message of salvation. And this is the message, my dear friends, that we are offering to you. you see, And it is free of cost. Well, we will continue on this wonderful subject as we examine certain nuances of, of this kingdom in the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as of now, I see that my time is up and I thank you for your time. Until next time, may the Lord richly you.